Hey, what's up, guys? Um, welcome to class. It is Thursday, December 3rd. Um, I know you guys have a couple videos already in the assignments to guide you through those, and those videos have um, all the information you need. Um, but I just wanted to kind of stop by, remind you that I am on Teams right now. I'm here to help you guys. Um, so assuming you're you're doing this during actual class time or during the day, uh, if not, I might not be on Teams. But if you're doing this when you're supposed to be doing it, uh, I am on Teams. So send me a message if you need it. But I was going to kind of run through a few things in there and kind of just talk through cellular respiration with you guys. So um, when we think of like respiration, a lot of people um, have been asking, you know, is this is this part of the the respiratory system? And it's, it's a part of a lot of things, and the respiratory system is a big part of that because you think respiration, respiratory, those two words go together, right? So um, when we're breathing, right, like we are taking oxygen into our bodies, and then when we breathe out, we are breathing carbon dioxide out of our bodies. So it's kind of an interesting and difficult thing to think about, but inside of our lungs, there are branches and then there are small um, like little sacs. Okay, so if you think about it like a bunch of grapes, that's an easy way to think about it. There's like a bunch of bunch of grapes in your lungs. That's kind of what it looks like, but really, really small. Right. And what those grapes are, those sacs, um, those are the gas exchange sites. So like where oxygen and CO2 are going to basically change from the outside to the inside. So um, you can kind of think about it like a roller coaster. So the oxygen comes in, right? It goes through your lungs, it's waiting in line, it gets into those sacs, and then it gets into your blood, right? It goes all throughout your system, that oxygen is used, it's replaced with CO2, so it's like the oxygen gets off the ride, the CO2 gets back on the ride, it gets back to our lungs, when you breathe it out, it's CO2. So it's kind of weird to think about that you breathe in and then you breathe out so quickly, but you're not breathing in the same um, air necessarily, right? Like some of it obviously is, but a lot of that is different. The oxygen that was in the environment is now in your body. Um, that CO2 that was in your body is now in the environment. So kind of running through that again, we breathe in the oxygen. That oxygen goes down into our lungs. It gets to those little sacs, so like the little grape on that bunch of grapes, if that's what you're thinking about. Um, from there, there's blood vessels, so that oxygen goes into the blood, and the CO2 that was in the blood comes into the lungs, right? So now that oxygen is in the blood, and now it's going to go throughout our body, right, and get used where it needs to, and then the CO2 goes back into that blood, and then once the blood comes back up to the lungs, you breathe that out. That's more CO2 you're breathing out. So kind of a difficult thing to visualize, but um, that's why, I, I mean, you guys know a lot of my analogies or my visualizations are kind of silly, but um, that is an easier way really to think about those, those bunches of grapes. And then really it is kind of like a, a ride throughout your body. It's going through your bloodstream. The oxygen gets in the blood. Um, once it's used up, it gets off the the oxygen or the carbon dioxide gets back on and you breathe it out. So, um, so that's, that's the, the breathing side of it, right? So then the other side of cellular respiration is that we need glucose. Okay. So we've got our oxygen through breathing. So now where are we getting this glucose? Well, glucose is the sugar that we need to make energy for our bodies. Right. And you might say, well, like, why does it need to be glucose? Well, thinking about chemical reactions, right? If I, like take some salt and throw it in water, it's not going to do anything crazy, right? If I take paper and put it on my table, it's not going to do anything crazy, right? You need specific reactants to have specific products, right? So when we are mixing oxygen with other sugars, you're not getting those same um, energy molecules that we need. It needs to be reacting with glucose. Okay, so then um, we eat, say, so like for, for breakfast this morning, I had a bagel, okay? So I eat my bagel, and my body is taking that bagel, right, and it's breaking it down into glucose molecules, okay? So that is the main purpose of your digestive system. So it's breaking down whatever you put into it 
into glucose molecules, okay? Obviously, there's other things, right? We've got like vitamins and people would say, well, then I'm just gonna eat cheeseburgers all the time if it just is gonna break down into glucose. No, there's, there's, other, there's other things that go in with the digestive system, right? But we're just trying to um, focus on how it relates to cellular respiration. So <clears throat> our digestive system breaks down the food into um, glucose, okay? And now we have that glucose in our bloodstream, right? Well, what did we just talk about in the respiratory system is in our bloodstream now? Oxygen, okay? So now our bloodstream is taking oxygen and glucose to all of our cells, right? And this is happening all the time, assuming that you are breathing and you are eating as uh, most animals do, right? Um, and even if you're not breathing, we talked about anaerobic respiration. That's a little bit more in depth, but... Um, if you're breathing and you're eating, right, or you have eaten recently, somewhat recently, your body has oxygen and it has glucose in its cells, right? Once we have that oxygen and that glucose, that O2 plus the C6H12O6, that's the um, sugar molecule, the glucose, that is the reaction that takes place that is making ATP, it is making water, and it is making CO2. Right, so let's think back to what we were talking about, about breathing in and out, right? So once that blood takes the oxygen and the sugar to our cells, our cells use that oxygen and that sugar in the mitochondria to make ATP, right? That makes ATP, but then it also makes that CO2. Well, once it makes that CO2, it just kicks it right back into the bloodstream. It's like, see you later. And then that bloodstream takes it back to your lungs and you breathe it out, right? So that's a pretty... Um, a pretty incredible thing if you think about it. The fact that it's a pretty fine balancing act that allows us to exist in the first place, animals to exist, um, and then thinking about that, our waste product, that CO2 and that water, that's exactly what plants need to survive, right? And plants are giving us glucose and they're giving us oxygen. So it is a pretty, I mean, fortunate thing, right? that we happen to utilize each other's waste products because um, it's, a, it's a cycle, right? And we're gonna kind of get into next week thinking about it that it's, it's more than just saying, oh, okay, well, photosynthesis and cellular respiration go together. No, they're, they're what makes up the carbon cycle because we've talked about when we are talking about atoms and elements that carbon is really, really special, right? Carbon has four valence electrons and carbon can bond with a ton of different, I want to say like patterns, designs, right? It can bond in a ton of different ways. So carbon is what we call the ingredient to organic life, right? So everything that's alive has carbon in it, okay? So carbon is a very, very incredible thing and carbon is involved heavily in this cycle, right? Glucose is C6H12O6, so that's, there's six carbons in there, right? And then carbon dioxide, that has carbon in it as well, right? So if we think about it, we eat some sugar, we eat in that, um, that food and we get the, the glucose, so we get the C6H12O6, right? And by having that carbon in our bodies, we use that. And then when we're done with that chunk of carbon, I guess you could think of, we breathe it out, that CO2 goes back out in the air, right? Where does that CO2 go? It goes back into the plants, right? those plants then take in that carbon dioxide they use that along with sunlight and water they make the glucose right and they make oxygen fortunately and then we take in that glucose we take in that oxygen right another way carbon is going back into the earth um, when organisms die right we break down into um, the atoms that make us so um, lots lots and lots of carbon in there but it's it's pretty it's pretty cool to think about this fact that um, plants and animals really balance each other, right? So um, we say, you know, save the rainforest or, you know, be nice to the trees. I, I get mad at kids out on the playground when they're like ripping off branches and stuff off plants. You guys know me. I'm just kind of silly. But at the same time, right, that is a true sense to think that we rely on, on plants in that manner. So um, kind of interesting to think about. Um, kind of just making sure I'm recapping everything. The main purpose of cellular respiration for, for animals is to make ATP, right? We can't just get energy from the sun like plants can. We need to make our energy. So we take oxygen, we take glucose, 
we make ATP. Where does that ATP use? It's used in all of our cells, right? Everything our cells are doing. So when I'm talking to you guys right now, right, a lot of cells are in action. I've got my mouth, I've got the muscles involved, I've got my tongue, I've got my voice box, I'm breathing, so my lungs are involved, all that, my nose, whatever. So lots of stuff is happening. All of those parts are made up of millions and millions of cells, right? Every single one of those cells is using ATP to be doing all this stuff. Okay, so pretty pretty wild to think about. Um, next week, we're going to really, really focus on um, how photosynthesis and cellular respiration really work together and kind of make this carbon cycle. Um, you guys will have a little assessment about that as well. Um, but hopefully this is, this is working out okay for you guys. Hopefully um, this is making sense. Remember, I'm on Teams right now. Um, I know this is not face-to-face -face live, um, but this is a lot more information for you in a lot better packaged form um, that you're able to go back through and see as much as you as much as you need. So um, don't forget, if you need me and you need to see my face, have a conversation, we can do that. Just uh, drop me a note on Teams, we'll do that. Um, if not, we are going to start every week. Um, with a live actual chat where I'm going to run you guys through the week, make sure we're all good, make sure we can kind of recap the previous week um, and make sure everything's going all right. But like I've said, I think that this format is going to work out better for you guys. Um, it's still a live first 15 minutes, um, but it's it's more than 15 minutes, right? I'm on Teams the whole, t the whole day for you guys. So um, if you need me, drop me a note and we will we'll figure out what you need. We'll, we'll get you some help, okay? Um, if this is still kind of confusing, don't don't stress out too much. I promise next week we're going to focus a lot more on this. You guys are going to get better at learning those chemical symbols. You'll get lear better at learning um, the equations for these two things and kind of seeing how they balance each other out. Um, other than that, hope you guys have a great day and send me a message if you need help. See ya.